Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm Alastair Beckett-King. And I'm James Shankshaft. And in this episode, we, the lawmen, are joined by a deputy law person. Ah. There's a lot of deputisation flying around, what with the old coronavirus lockdown of 2020. We printed up some deputy lawman badges. We stamped them out of the old psh machine. Yeah. 3D printed them and then sent them in the post. And for this episode, we've deputised the musical comedian Harriet Brain, who's going to tell us all about the goat boy of Surbiton. James, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Calling you from my nuclear bunker. Excellent. They laughed at you when you f- rented a nuclear bunker, didn't they? <laughs> Even the landlords. <laughs> they, they did. Uh, I would like to introduce to you, James, a deputy law person for, for yet another lockdown episode of Lawmen. Are, are you ready? Yeah. It is Harriet Brain, the <laughs> musical comedian and expert on art history. Harriet Brain, hello. Hello. Hello, Harriet. Hi, James. And Alistair. Is that, is that correct? Art, hist- art history? Is uh, that well, your... yeah, it's, it's what I studied at uni. Um, but yeah, I... I've, would say I'm an expert, yep. Wow. Wrote a comedy show about it. <laughs> That's the thing, because most comedians are privately educated people who studied, who like read philosophy or French literature at Cambridge and then do comedy shows exclusively about willies. Yeah. What you've done <laughs> is you've... You've done shows about the thing you know about. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, expert is debatable, but uh, I do like to use what I've learned. Otherwise, what a waste. Yeah. Am I right in thinking, Harriet, that you're from... Surbiton. I am. Do, do you know Surbiton, James? I've been to Surbiton. To the train station. Or- you know what? Love the train station. It's the beautiful train station, isn't it? It is the beautiful train station. It's in Harry Potter, it's so beautiful. Really? Mm-hmm. And Poirot. Ooh. Is it in Poirot too? It was in a Poirot. Cool. I did a little look on Wikipedia today. Uh huh. If it's in one Poirot, it's probably in many Poirots because Poirot has solved murders in the same house about six times. <laughs> he just keeps coming back to different angles of the same Art Deco house. It's like, why do people keep moving back in there? Is he some sort of scammer, Poirot? <laughs> I think it's a classic bit of murder situation where just bad luck follows him around. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, he's just cursed. Yeah, because obviously Berger, yes, lived on Guernsey, Jersey. Are they different islands? Yes, they are. Or just the same word said differently? Guernsey and Jersey. <laughs> Guernsey and Jersey. <laughs> they were his sidekicks, weren't they? They were Berger's yeah. assistants. It's like GIF and Jif. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Surbiton, mm-hmm. I know Surbiton from the sitcom The Good Life. I know from Stella Street because I'm edgy and hip. Ooh. F- from where? Do you remember Stella Street? No. Oh, you, you must be five to ten years younger than me and James. Oh, is it set in Surbiton? A street in Surbiton where loads of celebrities live. Oh, wow. I need to get on that. But I suspect that Stella Street, like The Good Life, chose Surbiton deliberately because it was sort of famously anonymous and bland and generic the name does make it sound like a suburban town like it's that's what the etymology is it sounds like you've just rushed while saying suburban town and it's just elided into surbiton my favorite thing i learned about surbiton today is the original name what's that kingston upon railway (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's like a child named it (laughs) Because <laughs> it was part of Kingston, and it was it, this was during the Industrial Revolution, and it was built by the railway, and it was so novel that they called it Kingston upon Railway. Yeah, you can tell from that name that the railway was a new idea at the time. Yeah, Kingston itself is to the north of of Surbiton, and they didn't want a railway coming through it because they were they had like a really bustling like coach industry, so they were like shunning the railway and put it south of Kingston, and what became Surbiton is. Yeah, is the station. Wow. Uh, so that's why they called it Kingston upon Railway. Um, but yeah, Surbiton's only been a town for like 150 years, like not very long. That's nothing. Mm. That's peanuts. Maybe a bit longer than that, but... So, Harriet, you come from what we've established to be the extremely dull uh, and characterless town of Surbiton. Indeed. With its quite nice train station. Yeah. What folkloric story have you brought us? Well, because of... If such hits as the good life and and uh, uh, the other one that you mentioned that I've already forgotten the name of <laughs> Stella Street. Um, a lot of people don't think it actually exists as as a as a real place. They just think it's a fictional place. Uh, but it does. It 
it does exist um and basically the folklore has has sprung up very recently about the town and its surroundings mostly written by a, one man or a group of people who have sort of taken it upon themselves to be the lawmen of Surbiton in a way what oh do we have a potential rivalry situation going on here i think you i think you might oh hmm. a, a beef there are a group of people um who call themselves the seething villagers and seething Seething Wells is like a small, a very small site where like uh, a water treatment site was set up in the Industrial Revolution. Uh, another thing that put Surbiton on the map. <laughs> <laughs> and it provided like clean water. But Seething Wells is a campus, I think, of Kingston University now. And this group of people who I, I know a few of them and they're like proper eccentric, cool people. They did like a few archaeological digs and they found like a some strange sort of things and sort of built up this folklore around it it's a really really good good story and there's this like little goat boy who is uh, found as a, as a baby in the cave uh, and this all happened in, in the days of yore oh yeah which i'm sure you're all familiar with yeah in seething in the village of seething mm. which is basically surbiton i can't believe you have a goat boy but you opened with the train station but, but it's I in really harry potter you need to get over the train station <laughs> in surbiton it's where the dursleys live <laughs> <laughs> Open the pitch. The elevator pitch is Goat Boy. Uh, I think. The Goat Boy was a, was a cheese maker. That was his his uh, profession. What sort of cheese? Goat's cheese, presumably. Would it be by definition goat's cheese? What no matter what milk he, he used. He doesn't make it with his own milk. He's a Goat Boy. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> As a USP, goat's milk with my own milk it doesn't <laughs> doesn't sound saleable. Male or female? No, no. So he makes cheese, and I think the children. Provide him with milk, like cow, no, like cow's milk. No, you can't milk children <laughs> from the cows, because Surbiton was just a like a piece of farmland, really. So maybe that's where the cows come from. But I think maybe the seething society of law men was maybe set up by cheesemakers. I think that might be the thing, or cheese eaters. I think cheese eaters. I think. Right. I think this, this whole story came about from um, a mixture of cheese and wine. <laughs> uh, You're using the phrase "cheese eater" the way people in the early 20th century used to talk about opium eaters, opium as people eaters. Who, who dreamt crazy <laughs> dreams, or how Americans talk about the French. Yes. Well, cheese cheese dreams are a known phenomenon, aren't they? So are they? D- wasn't it one of the ones that turned out to be a lie because of the war? Cheese dreams, really? Yeah, they didn't want people to eat cheese at night. That's hilarious because it alerted the bombers yeah, to your location. the Nazis could smell it. I'm, I'm a vegan, so uh, my dreams are untroubled by the guilt of cheese. Yes, this goat boy with his range of cheeses. Leffy Ganderson is the name of the goat boy. That's a good name. It's a really good name. And it's because uh, the kids used to call him Lefty and it sort of got shortened over the over the centuries to Leffy. So there's, a, there's an island in the Thames nearby called uh, Thames Ditton Isle or Thames Ditton Island. I've been to Thames Ditton. Thames Ditton Island, according to this folklore, is the dead corpse of a giant. It's like a how things got their name type of folklore, because the giant was called Tamas Deaton. And so it's the and then it over time it's it's now become Thames Ditton Isle. So this giant said to the goat boy, he was like, I'm gonna starve you. Oh no, hang on, how did it go? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> the, okay, so the goat boy said, You must leave this town and the giant says no and then the goat boy says if i survive the whole year on just food that passes through this small gold ring that he has then you must leave and the giant says oh easy you'll die and and so the goat boy just pours all the milk for his cheese through the ring Ooh! and so he, he he tricks the giant that's very clever yeah and he makes and he shares it with everyone he shares it with the giant as well even he probably um, has spaghetti as well oh yeah and spaghetti and at pepper armies and noodles as long as they come on a noodle by noodle basis celery he was he was smarter than us to use a liquid rather than to think of which which long thin <laughs> solids could i eat mm, long cheese <laughs> cheese strings <laughs> he invented the cheese string this goat boy uh leffy gunderson I keep giving it a sort of... Is that the Surbiton accent you're doing there? Leffy Ganderson? It's got a real sort of uh, Scandi Noir feel to it. Leffy Ganderson? Yeah, it has, yeah. The the whole town has, if you look beyond the train station. <laughs> it's a very, very noir place. So I have a, just a couple more questions about the goat boy. Oh, yeah, please do. Please go for it. Mm. What does he look like? He's based on a a tiny little... It's quite interesting, actually, because 
they, they, they did like a proper archaeological dig like with they didn't like plant anything or you know it was like a genuine dig and they found this like t- little figure of a and it had like a goat's head or what looked like a goat's head oh. so that's where the sort of mythology comes from is this sort of little tiny bit of metal that looked a bit like a goat so yeah he sort of got long black horns that sort of curl behind his head and a little boy's body so all oh, right little boy's body Goat, goat's face? Ah, uh, I was going the other way round. <laughs> <laughs> a goat's body, but with the face of a boy. Is that what you visualised? Well, actually, no, I was goat's lower legs. But yeah, I, even more, now I'm thinking of that. I'm definitely thinking of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's not, he's not a satyr, I don't think. He's right. Not. He's not a pan like legs bending backwards type. Mr. Tumnus, come on, just say Mr. Tumnus. He's a bit Mr. Tumnusy, yeah, but I don't think he's got goat legs. He's Mr. Tumnesque. <laughs> <laughs> he's Mr. Tumnish, but he's not. Um... Thinking about it, he would need. Um, opposable thumbs if he's doing cheese production to any sort yes, of level yes. that he could distribute it and if he can wear a ring he has our fingers so that's true he, he definitely ha- he, he has like um, a human body I think does he know the laughing cow <laughs> <laughs> probably they probably met uh, at a convention but the laughing cow is just a cow with a sense of humour <laughs> but she but she has a human laugh <laughs> she's got it's G-S-O-H <laughs> I think it's one of the most sort of unintentionally Lovecraftian creations, The Laughing Cow. I just feel, I wish the the advertising executives who created it had just taken a moment to realise the horror they'd unleashed on the world. (laughs) As a cow laughs open-mouthed like a human, it's terrifying. Especially when you really, (laughs) really think about where milk comes from. (laughs) And she's just laughing. What's the joke? What is the cow laughing at? I don't know. I think if, like, in the adverts where she laughs, if they if they hadn't cut it so early, it's one of them laughs that turns into a crying. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> She's probably just, like, laughing at, like, oh, you guys drink other animals' milk. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> it's a nervous laugh. The Laughing Cow has been around since 1921, so there is every likelihood they... That she's dead. <laughs> wow. I, I tried to find out some folklore about King, the Kingston area and couldn't. It's bare. Uh, it's the only thing I came up with was um, Kingston Leal or Kingston nope. Lyle in uh, Oxfordshire slash Berkshire. It's the, wrong, it's the wrong one. You're in. I know it's the wrong Kingston where they have uh, bl- the Blowing Stone. Have you heard about oh, the Blowing Stone, James? That rings a bell. No, it doesn't. It makes a <laughs> completely different sound. You blow <laughs> into the hole and it makes a, a booming horn sound if, if you blow into the right hole. Hey. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> what? Well, Kingston upon Thames has a has a stone as well, like a historic stone. Mm. It's not a blowing stone, but it's allegedly where the ki- the old kings of yore got uh, crowned. I think I've seen that stone. So it's <gasps> like a crowning stone, and it's sort of right next to this little river called the Hogsmill River. Um, and the, the Hogsmill River is, um, I think, like a little tributary to the Thames. Has and to be. I think there's a little bit of folklore about. Oh, yeah, I know that the Hogsmill was the background for that really famous painting of Ophelia by Millet, John Everett Millet. So, you know, that, that picture like of a lady with in the lying in the river and it's got flowers all around her. Yeah, with her hands up. Like she's doing air quotes, <laughs> but she's died mid air quote. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, that, yeah, that is cool. We've got a few artists, actually. There's an artist called Edward Moybridge who... Was a bit of a strange guy. He had Is like he the a... photographer who who uh, the early film photographer. Yeah, photographer. He was born and died in Kingston, and he also killed a man. What, did he? <laughs> yep. Really? Uh, I think he wasn't in Kingston at the time. I think this happened in America. Oh, it's not important then. If it was outside of the borough, what happens in Kingston stays in Kingston. But what happens outside of Kingston is a very serious <laughs> matter. So his wife had an affair and he killed the guy that she had an affair with and he mm. was let off because it was a, a, a crime of passion. Oh, yeah. So he, wow. he got off scot-free. A crime of passion is a weird defence because it's essentially like saying, but I wanted to. Exactly. Killing that person was really important to me. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Mybridge, he did the, the photographs that you've, you've all seen of um, the first image of horses running and people running, where he set up yes. a series of cameras and set them off one, poo, 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 one at a time to create the, the apparent yeah. moving image. And one of them was a girl. <laughs> 
It was the perfect cover for murder, but luckily Poirot has just arrived in Surbiton. A group of photographers was obsessed with whether all four of a horse's hooves leave the ground at the same time when the horse is galloping. Because they um, just didn't have a lot on back then, did they? Because you couldn't see it. It was too quick. And well, so, you- so Edward became like the guy that proved that, yes, all, the, all four of the horse's hooves do leave the ground at the same time. Mm, nice one, Edward. So, yeah, pretty cool. Until until all the murdering. Until, right up until the murder, he was a, a top bloke. I was trying to find anything more interesting about seething wells. It's uh, I, can I is is that a name that's been made up by the 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 wacky folklorists of Serbia? <laughs> no, or is it really not, called real. seething? It's really called. It's seething. called seething wells. Seething wells. Yeah, it's a great sounds, name, isn't it? You used the phrase to me when we were talking about this in message, and I assumed you were just referring to the state of mind. I genuinely thought you meant that people of Serbia were. In a state of seething. seething. Yes, I thought, <laughs> I thought you meant there was a lot of anger bubbling underneath the surface. Well, I don't know who or why called it seething wells, but me and my fr- there's a bus that goes to seething wells and it's, it would say it on the bus. And whenever the bus went past, uh, me and my friends would, it, it, when it were in school, would be like, oh, my wells are seething. <laughs> that, was, that was a laugh. I'd like a good bus gag. I've got two in my repertoire. Oh, yeah? mm-hmm. There was the two, two, two... To tooting, which was one of my favourites. I like that. And I would get the bus. I used to get the bus. I used to in Brixton. If I got the bus down to the station, one of the stops was called St Matthew's Estate, and I always thought I'll leave him alone then. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I used to live near uh, St Vincent's Close. You're like, oh, watch out! Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I once saw a man with very, very, very back combed hair, like, you know, sort of Trumpian level back combing. The lift on it was incredible. He was getting two and a half inches, four or five centimetres worth of mm-hmm. uh, pure air in his hair. And I saw him get on a train to High Barnet. <laughs> oh, no. Very good. It's incredible. Genuinely sorry. I, I believe you. I believe you. That's, yeah. I've just thought of another sort of interesting thing that we used to look out of the window of our school and marvel at, um, as well as a seething Wells bus. It was the There was a lady who used to go past, I think every day, an old lady would go past really fast on a scooter, like a, like not, not like a engine scooter, like a, like a human powered scooter. Oh, and under, under her own steam. Under her own steam. And she was very fast. And so we really? used to look, look out and say, oh, it's scooter granny, it's scooter granny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had um, the world's oldest paper boy. <laughs> Aww. So it was like this 70-odd-year-old man who had a paper round would cut across our field, our school field. Wow, that, I can't believe that's yeah, not a TV it's... show, World's Oldest Paper Boy. <laughs> I'm sure Channel 5 Or, or a reality TV show, but, but no, you don't. You can't really compete to be the world's oldest paper boy, I guess. Yeah, by murdering all the other ones. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's how it works. I guess you're in a Mybridge situation where uh, committing crimes passionel. I really wanted to be the world's oldest paper boy. <laughs> well, let him off then. No judge a convict. <laughs> Has that concluded the um, coverage of uh, Surbiton's uh, folklore? I think Ch- Chessington is another town nearby. I think that's where the cheese making is supposed to have taken place. Uh... So it went from Cheesington to Chessington. Weirdly enough, like Surbiton, Surbiton is weirdly absent from its own folklore. In an effort to sort of deflect from people thinking of this place is boring they've made up a mythology that's mostly based around cheese <laughs> exactly oh. yeah but it's it's really great and every uh, every year i think they have the seething sardine festival exciting um, which is based on a, a mythology about uh freshwater sardine fishing that used to happen in the days of yore um to celebrate that tradition people dress up as guinea pigs <laughs> so you can you can actually you can, i mean we should go. We should yeah. go next next time. Uh, it's it really is really fun and and there's like statues of of Leffy, you know, temporary statues like Papier Mache statues. Uh, yeah, guinea pigs. I can't remember why. I I got a feeling we're being lured somewhere, Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna get Wicker Man. The pictures have a bit of a feeling of the the sort of the creepy sex party in The Shining, where everyone's wearing costumes. It's a, it's got that vibe slightly. Yes, but it all happens in daylight. There's live music, and it's just a really nice bit of fun for the uh, residents of a very boring place. It's a trap. It's a trap, yeah. <laughs> I think it's time for the scores. What do you think, James? Yeah, hit me. Are you ready, Harriet? Uh, yeah. With scores. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your first category? Names. Okay. James, what do you think? 
There's some names. There are definitely some names. Some really good ones. There are some excellent names. The Goat Boy, There's Leffy Ganderson. Goat Boy's good, but as we established, it's not quite descriptive enough. Should we Goat Headed Boy? we all got the same <laughs> I'm, picture. I'm, I'm sorry you're uncomfortable with ambiguity, James, but it's still a good name. Seething Wells, that's very descriptive. Mm. Seething Wells is good. I like the concept of angry liquids, definitely. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Thomas Deaton, the giant. Angus Deaton's, yeah. <laughs> but you, the place was called Kingston-upon-Railway. That's a brilliant name. <laughs> and it was rejected in favour of Cerberton. I know, I know. Do you know the Thames has two names? Um, you know, it's called, up your way, it's called the Isis. Oh, yes, yes, the Thames Isis, Thamesis. Yeah, on, on old maps, it's it's one long word. Yes. So it's uh, yeah. tem- Thamesis. Thamesis. And somehow the, the front end belongs to London, the back end, Oxfordshire. The Thamesis, when I was a kid, that was the best ride at Orton Towers. <laughs> <laughs> or as my friend thought it was called... For ages, Alton's Tower. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm so annoyed that I corrected him when I just taken an extra second and he could still think it was called Alton's Tower. (laughs) And I absolutely love that name. So much more magical. So we've got some cracking names. We've got Goat Boy. We've got Kingston on Railway. We've got... Surbiton. We've got Alton's Tower. Alton's Tower. Norbiton. Norbiton. Yeah, exactly. New Malden. New Malden. Old Malden. Old Malden Classic. <laughs> Wonderful South Western <laughs> Railway Service stations. No. Boring, boring place names. Uh, two. Oh, two? Leffy Ganderson is so disappointed. Leffy Ganderson. He's named after a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and you're only getting two for Seething Wells. That's all I'm counting. All as right. A good name. Well, Seething Wells is really good. I can't oh, my wells that. are seething now, James. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, it's it's a very cruel and merciless two for names. Right. I really think that's unfair, mm. but um, those are the rules. So, uh, what's what is the second category, Harriet? Supernatural, apparently. Oh, supernatural, James. Come on, you've got to, you've got to hand it to Surbiton. For what? A giant who was tricked. A goat boy with a ring. A boy with a, a head cheese, of a goat. A cheesemonger with a beard. A short <laughs> cheesemonger with a beard. And horns. And horns. Well, yeah, maybe. No, a goat boy is supernatural. You, ha- you have to accept that that's not normal. Mm, a goat-headed boy. A goat-headed boy. That's pretty yeah, spooky. All right. Oh, and um, Edward Moybridge, yep. uh, the murderer. That's pretty spooky. Moybridge. And Harry Potter, that's really spooky. Yeah, and Harry Potter. He's very supernatural. He's got lots going um, on. Lots. Mm-hmm. Ley lines. Ley lines. Ley lines. Mm. They all, they all come I, together mm. at the back of a pub called The Lamb. <laughs> Everyone says that about late lines. So they come together at the oh. back of the pub called The Lamb. They all cross over each other in the beer garden. <laughs> Converging left, right and centre. Pretty supernatural, James. Um, three. Uh, Is that uh, a pity three? <laughs> yeah. That's a pity three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Scooter Granny, she's pretty supernatural. She does sound pretty cool. I like Scooter Granny. She's pretty cool. You're making this very hard work, yep. James. Um, but I'm, I'm sure we can uh, pull it back with the next category. Mm. Uh, what is the next category, by the way, Harriet? The next category is um, boring. Boring. Oh, that's five out of five. <laughs> five out of five? All the way. Yeah. Oh, these are out of five? Yes. Uh, yeah, they're out of five. These, uh, these, th- oh, oh, okay. I was, I was worried they were out of ten and I was getting really uh, down. <laughs> but that's okay. No, Surbiton can live with two and three out of five. <laughs> it's very much in its wheelhouse. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that, what, what better argument for Surbiton's ready acceptance of mediocrity than Harriet's delight at receiving a two and a three out of five? <laughs> is that is, is, is five out of five for boring? Yeah, always. Yeah, definitely for Surbiton. Yeah, excellent. I'm Yay! sorry to sort of yes. throw coal on the... On the fire of Surbiton's boring. All I can say is you need to come and visit yourself on the day of the festival. Yeah, this is definitely the a trap. Sardine Festival, definitely. and then you'll see. <laughs> but we'd, I think we'd get put in like a, a wicker goat boy. Look, there's no wicker. You say there's no wicker, but I've seen The Good Life, and there's a lot of wicker around. <laughs> Just the raw material is there in excess. Oh, damn it. Uh, what's the final category? The final category is... Train stations. <laughs> train stations or train station. You're not an experienced player of this game, Harry. I have to warn you, a plural can cost you a lot of points in this section. Train station. Train station, okay. Yeah. Yes. So we've got a movie star train station. It appeared in Harry Potter. A yeah, movie star train station. And Granada Television's Poirot. Potter. Poirot. Yeah. With, with David Suchet. Uh, yeah, I love it. It's stunning. I didn't know that it was famously beautiful. And I went there and I saw it and I thought... 
Oh, that's a really good looking train station. Thank you. That's how good it was. It's it's one of them egotistical things. I later heard it was like Brit- regularly voted Britain's best railway station. And I thought, yeah, I was right. <laughs> My taste in railway stations is in line with the nation as a whole. <laughs> That must have been a relief. Mm, exactly. I walked through that train station every day to get to school. Really? You walked through the train station? Yeah, there's like a there's like a walkway through it. A lot of train stations have them, you know, like a fully enclosed... Uh... Well, like an airborne tunnel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like a tunnel of the skies. <laughs> an airborne yeah. tunnel. It's Sky a tunnel, tunnel in the skies, guys. <laughs> this is definitely five out of five, then. Oh. This station sounds like the best. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a Mario level. <laughs> Excellent. That's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, that, Harriet? It started. It yeah. started off really shaky. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm. I, I hope the the guy, my friend, who writes the law um, of Surbiton, who wrote the story of Leffy Ganderson, isn't listening to this. Oh God, no. Because the station and the boring got the <laughs> <laughs> got the big scores. I really slug it off. And the folklore got the lower ones. But um, yeah, happy with that. The yeah, the slogan of Surbiton. Yeah. Happy with that. <laughs> Discover yourself. Discover yourself. <laughs> In our airborne tunnel. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the podcast, Harriet. Is there anything you oh, would like to plug? Because I know you, you do podcasts left, right and centre. And uh, I, I believe they're not being destroyed by the plague. Oh, well, kind of. Um, I, I do a few podcasts here and there. The, the main one that exists in broadcasted form is the Design Spark podcast. And we're just about to record the third series of that to be released in a month or so so but there are two series that you can enjoy uh already it's you and a couple of other people on that podcast isn't it yeah it's me beck hill who is amazing and dr lucy rogers who is also amazing she was a judge on the new like the rebooted robot wars uh and she's extremely intimidatingly intelligent when it comes to like mechanical stuff and so it's the three of us sort of chatting about technology which I never thought I would happen to me, like, because I'm, well, to be fair, I am, like, the technophobe person in the podcast that has to be, like, persuaded that everything is good, not evil. But, yeah. That's got to be different from the from a judge of a robot war. <laughs> yeah. Is this, like, the sort of the, the Nuremberg trials of the robot, after the robot oh war? Oh, my God. <laughs> Where Matilda was <laughs> disassembled for treason. It's like, I didn't do anything. It's like, your name is Sir Kill a Lot. It's in the name. <laughs> Sergeant Basham, who was dishonourably discharged. <laughs> summarily recharged. And now they're all just working like a Wix. He's a Roomba. He's a Roomba. <laughs> Well, that was Lawmen with me, Alistair Beckett-King. Me, James Shakeshaft. And our guest, Deputy Law Person, Harriet Brain. If you've enjoyed this episode of Lawmen, produced under very trying circumstances, the least you can do is to give us a like, a subscribe, follow us on the Twitter, on the Instagram, or recommend us to a friend. And thank you to all the lovely people who have messaged us. I've really enjoyed your stuff. You guys are funny. Yeah, just got on Twitter and told us to stop recording the podcast. And Oh, not my mum. <laughs> Well, I think you were very harsh there, James. Really? It's boring. Yes. I've been to Surbiton. It's boring. (laughs) (laughs) There's no argument here, but I think those names were good. I just want you to know, one of these days you're going to be... Tearing down the barrel of a two out of five for names, quite undeservedly. Uh, you, you won't know when it's coming. Could be any any time, day or night, but probably during the podcast. <laughs>